Everyone is looking for which chain will have the next 100 Xs. It seems that most of the Layer 1 and Layer 2 ecosystems have already become saturated. So, in order to uncover those 100x gems, you need to dig deeper. Dig deeper, deeper, deeper. This has led to the rise of Layer 3s, with the all-new DGEN chain being just one of many examples. As the name suggests, DGEN chain is, well, a chain for degenerates, mostly filled with meme coins. The thing is, though, Layer 3s are also super efficient, making them perfect for things like gaming, DeFi, and much, much more besides. As such, Layer 3 chains and the cryptos launching on them have some serious 100x potential. So today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about Layer 3s, including what they are, what benefits they bring, and where you can find them. Before we go on, I need to let you know that I am not a financial advisor, folks, and nothing in this video should be considered financial or investment advice. This video is purely for entertainment and educational purposes. And I'll also note that myself and many other members of the Coin Bureau team hold ETH as well as various projects within its ecosystem as part of our own personal portfolios. Don't worry, though, we promise to remain objective and unbiased in our review. Now, the reason why Ethereum has more layers than a 10-year-old's birthday cake is because of the obvious drawbacks of Ethereum itself. If you've ever tried to use Ethereum for, well, pretty much anything, really, then you'll know that there's two major problems with it. It's slow and it's expensive. In fact, it's the exact reason why other monolithic chains like Solana have seen so much growth lately. We'll come back to that later, though. Anyways, Ethereum's popularity means that the network is often highly congested. What this means is a higher demand for block space, resulting in users paying more in gas fees to skip the queue, so to speak, in order for their transactions to be verified faster. In many ways, this makes Ethereum a victim of its own success. Case in point, Ethereum's all-time high was on the 10th of November 2021. That same day, the average gas fee was $56.67. And this is all made worse by the fact that Ethereum can only process around 30 transactions per second. For perspective, Solana can process between 2 and 3,000 transactions per second. So, in order to overcome this performance ceiling, Ethereum is supported by Layer 2s. These are protocols built on top of the Ethereum mainnet, the Layer 1, to roll transactions up into a bundle and then process that bundle as one transaction before sending the data back to the base layer. Some notable examples of Layer 2s include Arbitrum, Optimism, and Immutable, all of which can handle much higher transaction speeds at a fraction of the cost. Incidentally, we also did a video about the Layer 2 ecosystem, and we'll leave a link to it in the description. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, smash that like button to give it a boost, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Also, don't forget to ping that notification bell so you don't miss our next one. Anywho, as great as Layer 2s are at enhancing Ethereum's performance, there's always room for improvement. Enter Layer 3s, which have popped up to take things to the next level. But just what the heck are Layer 3s, and where did they come from? Well, as you've probably guessed, Layer 3s are advanced protocols built on top of Layer 2s. So, to use the example from the introduction, DGEN Chain is a platform built on top of BASE, which is itself a Layer 2 built on Ethereum. Now, Layer 3s are built to work in conjunction with Layer 2s to help decongest the Layer 1 and scale the Ethereum blockchain even further. To do this, Layer 3s optimize various consensus mechanisms and data structures, enabling even higher throughput and transaction processing capabilities than Layer 2s. Some Layer 3s act as an additional layer of roll-up technology, taking those Layer 2 transaction bundles we mentioned earlier and processing multiple bundles as one transaction. The data from that transaction goes back to the Layer 2 to then be sent on to the base layer. This gives a massive boost to the speed and efficiency of the network. This isn't the only positive, though. In fact, it's arguably one of the least impressive. The real benefits Layer 3s can provide relate to usability and interoperability. That's because 
Layer 3 is considered the application layer. This is where more user-friendly applications can be built to provide real-world use cases. In order to allow these applications to run at full capacity, each Layer 3 hosts just one dApp. This singular focus offers Layer 3 developers unparalleled levels of customization, as well as robust security features for each dApp, giving them the opportunity to create secure applications with the user in mind. Their independent nature means that they can adopt innovative fee models tailored to the specific needs of that particular dApp. This flexibility leads to more cost-effective transactions, making the network more accessible and affordable for a greater number of users. Layer 3s can also leverage this flexibility to connect multiple Layer 2 networks together, allowing transactions across different blockchains to be processed seamlessly, something Layer 2s can't currently do. This fosters a more robust and interconnected crypto ecosystem. So, when tallied together, this all points towards an improved user experience. This is great for people already in the space, and we all know how clunky a lot of crypto applications can be. But when a crypto app is easy to use for those people entering the space for the first time, they're much more likely to stick around. Put differently, Layer 3s could become a huge driving force towards the promised land of mass adoption. That said, this adoption relies heavily on Layer 3 projects' success with attracting developers and users to build and use these dApps in the first place. With the Layer 1 space becoming ever more competitive, Layer 3s will require strategic partnerships, developer incentives, and a great UX if they want to create thriving ecosystems. Before that can really happen, though, these Layer 3s need to be battle-tested. Remember, this is a brand new niche, and with each dApp running on its own network, so it's absolutely critical that they have robust security measures and protection against potential vulnerabilities. If they can nail all that, though, Layer 3s could be one of the most significant developments in crypto, with the potential to shape the future of the industry by driving innovation, expanding the possibilities of blockchain technology, and pushing wider adoption. Translation. Layer 3s are, potentially, bullish AF. So at this point, you're hopefully familiar with what Layer 3s are and what they can do. But I bet you're wondering which cryptos actually fall into this category. Well, let's take a look, shall we? Now, this is a relatively new space, and the list of Layer 3 projects is still expanding. As such, this list is by no means exhaustive, and there's a good chance that more will have popped up by the time you watch this video. It's also important to note that many of these projects don't have their own native tokens, at least not yet, anyway. This is a good thing for two reasons. First, it means their primary function is to provide an actual use case, and second, it means that playing around on these chains could mean you're likely to be eligible for airdrops if and or when they do launch their own tokens. So, Bearing that in mind, a good way to start is by checking L2Beat. We'll leave a link in the description, by the way. At the time of shooting, there are 11 Layer 3 projects listed there, but we won't go into all of them for the sake of time. It's also worth noting that L2Beat's list doesn't seem to capture everything. For instance, there's an L3 called Orbs that was launched way back in 2019, but for some reason it isn't included in this list. Anyways. We'll start with some projects that do actually have their own token. These are Orbs, the aforementioned DGEN chain, and Xi. Now, Orbs is a Layer 3 that's actually sandwiched between the Layer 1 and the Layer 2, serving as a decentralized backend to enhance EVM and non-EVM-compatible smart contracts to support things like Web3, DeFi, NFTs, and GameFi. Next is DGEN chain, which, as we mentioned earlier, is built on top of Base. Not surprisingly, its native DGEN token was originally launched as a meme coin, but also aims to reward engagement on its channel on Farcaster, a sort of decentralized version of Twitter. Since then, DGEN has garnered the attention of developers, content creators, and enthusiasts alike. Oh, and if you're looking to buy, sell, or trade DGEN, then it's listed on Bybit. And if you sign up using our link below, 
you won't only get 0% maker fees for 30 days, but you'll also have a chance of winning a 60K exclusive sign up bonus. This deal is only available for the users of this channel and for a limited time only. Link below. Now, another layer three is Xi, a gaming focused project that's built on Arbitrum. We won't go into this one too much, but if you want a full breakdown of what Xi is all about, then we covered this one exclusively for our Coin Bureau Club members. As for the remaining layer threes we'll be discussing, these don't have their own tokens just yet, but I'll remind you that it might be worth messing around with these chains if airdrop farming is your thing. Anyway, first up is the Stack Chain, a social media focused layer three built using Optimism's tech and settling on base. Stack Chain allows brands to create their own loyalty programs to drive community engagement. Stack's aim is to address the shortfall of airdrops, which they say lack good tools for efficiently allocating rewards. Stack Chain was founded by CEO Graham Boy in January 2023 and is backed by the likes of Coinbase Ventures, Conduit, A Capital, and Archetype. Next, we have Syndicate's Frame Chain. This one leverages Optimism and Celestia's tech on base with a focus on providing devs with a scaling solution to bring future Layer 3 projects to a mainstream level. Syndicate's Frame Chain is an application programming interface, or API, that helps developers create their own Layer 3s. As it so happens, Syndicate's API was also used to launch the DGen chain. Syndicate was created in 2020 by co-founders Will Papper and Ian Lee. It has a plethora of notable partnerships and investors, including Andreessen Horowitz, Coinbase, Circle, Polygon, and Protocol Labs, to name just a few. Then there's ZK Link Nova, an aggregated rollup that actually leverages multiple host chains. The protocol aims to unify Ethereum's Layer 2s to achieve limitless liquidity and has a token that's yet to launch. ZK Link was founded in 2021 by Vince Yang. Partnerships include Coinbase Ventures, Polygon, Solana, Crypto.com, and Arrington Capital, among many others. Now, as we mentioned earlier, there will be more Layer 3s outside of what we've just listed, but it'll be up to you to DYOR and find the projects that you think will have the most potential. So, it's clear that Layer 3s stand to bring new benefits to a plethora of use cases. Perhaps the most obvious one is scalability. Whereas Layer 2s can scale up a Layer 1 like Ethereum by processing transactions off-chain, they do have their limits. In simple terms, Layer 2 transactions can only be compressed once. So, stacking multiple layers of the same roll-up technology on top of each other won't work. Layer 3s, on the other hand, bring unprecedented levels of scaling not previously available. Pretty much all of the projects that we've mentioned aim to support scalability in one way or another, with ZK Link Nova perhaps being the most notable example, as this is its primary focus. This scaling subsequently brings benefits to other use cases, such as GameFi. This is because a greater level of scalability means that gaming networks can run much smoother, providing a much better experience for gamers and developers alike. With many blockchain gaming projects centering around in-game asset ownership, in the form of NFTs, the boost to their accessibility means that their ecosystems can thrive as more people find the GameFi space to be more adoptable than ever. Gaming Layer 3s include Proof of Play, Apex, and Xi, which I'll remind you we covered for our Coin Bureau Club members. DeFi protocols can also benefit as the introduction of more customizable smart contracts means that platforms can now offer even more financial products. The flexibility they offer means that investors now have even more options to generate yield than ever before. Derry is a notable example here, with its focus on a more interoperable DeFi ecosystem. Not only that, but Layer 3s could also benefit decentralized social media platforms too. This is because in their current form, one of the biggest hurdles that DeSo platforms face is their inability to handle large amounts of traffic and on-chain data. With the scalability now on offer, Social finance elements such as NFTs and reward tokens are a lot more accessible, allowing creators to use these monetization models to help build and engage community. Layer 3s here include Stack, the Syndicate Frame Chain, and even the DGen Chain. As you can imagine, 
There will only be more uses for Layer 3 protocols as time goes on, but it's clear that they stand to really raise the bar for what Ethereum's ecosystem can achieve and could be what finally pushes Ethereum into mainstream adoption. There is, however, one big issue that we need to address. Whichever way you look at it, the fact that we now have two layers on top of Ethereum makes things complicated and, in a lot of ways, confusing. I mean, if we really expect the broader adoption of cryptocurrency by new users, can we honestly say that Ethereum offers the best solution? To be blunt, they're probably going to turn to other monolithic chains that can handle these things on their own without the additional layers of complexity. The obvious standout here is Solana. Ethereum's sluggishness is due to the fact that it's much more decentralized than rival chains like Solana, but the question will be if newer users will really care enough about this. In our opinion, they should, because without decentralization, what you're left with is another version of the already existing financial system that's actually worse than what we already have. The harsh reality is, though, most people just want an easy and cheap way to interact with the world of crypto. And for things like transaction fees, speeds, and even token bridging, the likes of Solana will naturally be the more appealing option. And by the way, you can learn more about how Ethereum and Solana stack up against each other by watching our video comparison, link below. And it's not just Solana either. Other Layer 1 blockchains such as Near, Say, Sui, and many others besides can likewise process transactions faster than Ethereum and with quicker finality times. The flip side to this, however, is that Ethereum makes up a massive chunk of the crypto ecosystem. Most stablecoins are based on Ethereum, and most of the top 100 projects are either ERC20 tokens or are projects based on Ethereum's code. So when the potential of this already massive ecosystem is supercharged by the new possibilities enabled by Layer 3s, the use case for alternative Layer 1s begins to lose some traction. After all, Ethereum may have its fair share of problems, but it's still the second largest crypto out there. Put simply, Ethereum is already tried and tested by most of the crypto community, and an increased level of accessibility will likely only strengthen its position. But this brings us to one important question. Do Layer 3s offer real potential, or do they only exist to suck up value from Ethereum? Well, this is a debate that was recently sparked on Twitter, and it was fueled by Polygon CEO Mark Boyron, who tweeted that, quote, L3s exist only to take value away from Ethereum and onto the L2s on which the L3s are built. This was then countered by Peter Haymond, the senior partnership manager at Offchain Labs, who responded by saying, quote, there's a bunch of benefits for L3s. They don't take value away from Ethereum. Arbitrum Foundation researcher Patrick McCorrie also fired back at Boyron by saying that, quote, L3s seem like a no-brainer. However, Helios Labs CEO Mert Mumtaz shared in Boyron's skepticism, stating that, quote, L3s are basically centralized servers sitting on other centralized servers, L2s. In other words, we just recreated Web2, but with higher fees, more scams, and a worse UX. So, a few varying opinions from some high-profile crypto natives. But what about the highest-profile crypto native of them all, Vitalik himself? Well, back in late 2022, the VDOG said that Layer 3s will serve a different purpose to scaling solutions by providing customized functionality, whilst also pointing out that Layer 3s will only really make sense if they provide different functions to Layer 2s. Then, on the 2nd of April this year, Vitalik commented that, quote, Layer 3s don't magically improve throughput even more, though they can reduce some fixed costs of batch publishing and deposits stroke withdrawals. He also added that, quote, There are other potentially lighter ways to get the same cost savings that you get from L3s. Now, from where we're sitting, Layer 3s are a bit of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they stand to bring Ethereum into a new era of accessibility and adoption, while on the other hand, they could also have a negative impact on ETH's price. That's simply because reduced gas fees naturally means less demand for ETH. That said, though, if Ethereum is more broadly adopted, 
the price shouldn't be too badly affected because demand for ETH will remain high, possibly even higher than it is now. Whether Layer 3s can prove the skeptics wrong remains to be seen, but it does seem like they're already showing real promise. So, with that in mind, just how much potential can Layer 3s really provide? Well, this brings us to the challenges that Layer 3s have to face. The first challenge is centralization. In case you weren't already aware, most Layer 2 blockchains use a single sequencer node to organize transactions, usually operated by the core development team behind the project. This arguably makes them very centralized. Logically, then, this makes Layer 3s extremely centralized by extension, as they do the same thing but on top of the Layer 2. The second challenge is competition. In case it wasn't obvious, Layer 3s are competing with other smart contract blockchains for the same end goals, cheaper fees and faster transactions. Not only that, but they're also competing with the Layer 2 space. These are only getting faster and cheaper by the day, and this is especially the case after the recent implementation of the Denkun upgrade. And you can find more about that in the description. And there's the competition coming from other Layer 3s. At the moment, there aren't that many about, but as time goes on and more Layer 3s begin to appear, the space will only become more competitive. This ties into the third challenge, which is the risk that liquidity in the Ethereum ecosystem could become more fragmented. To be clear, this is something that's already a concern at the Layer 2 level, as more projects aim to become the de facto layer for Ethereum users to complete basic transactions. This risk only increases once you introduce an entirely new layer of additional blockchains. This is what Mark Boyron pointed out on Twitter that fueled the debate we spoke about earlier, and he may well have a valid point. To be fair, this is something that ZK Link aims to address in the hope that by collating Ethereum's scattered liquidity onto its blockchain, ZK Link can increase the capital efficiency within the Ethereum ecosystem. Time will tell just how successful that plan will be. Anyway, the fourth challenge relates to the second, and that's the already existing choices for similar use cases, specifically from the Cosmos ecosystem. This is because Cosmos has been at the forefront of application-specific blockchains for years. Whilst Cosmos is fairly centralized in nature with just 180 validators, this hasn't stopped it from building one of the largest ecosystems in all of crypto. Cosmos's founders have always held the belief that, as crypto adoption continues, apps will need their own dedicated blockchains if they want to keep up with demand and remain usable. It looks like the Layer 3 space only proved them right. So, as much as Layer 3s are bringing a lot of excitement to the Ethereum ecosystem, they certainly have their fair share of hurdles to overcome. Even so, there's still a hugely exciting development, particularly, of course, for Ethereum. Let's just see exactly how far they can bring the ecosystem forward in the future. OK, that's just about a wrap for today's video, folks. But we want to hear from you now. Are you bullish on Layer 3s or are they just degen plays with no real potential? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you're looking to trade cryptos on an exchange, then be sure to check out the Coin Bureau deals page where we have some of the best deals in all of crypto. You'll find sign-up bonuses of up to $60,000 and trading fee discounts of up to 60%. We also have exclusive deals on hardware wallets for you to keep it all stored safely. And if you want to find some of the best crypto swag out there, the Coin Bureau merch store has it all. The link to that is in the description too. OK, thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. My name is Guy and this is goodbye.